Hey students, in this video we're going to cover the uh, solving trig equations and sum and difference formula quiz. Uh, you may need a calculator uh, to do some of this, so grab one and join me. So for problem one, we have to give all solutions to the equation sine 2x equals sine x. So all we're going to use first is the identity that sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. We're going to replace sine 2x here with this. So our new equation is 2 sine x cosine x equals sine x and now we're going to subtract sine from both sides so we get 2 sine x cosine x minus sine x equals 0 we factor sine x out so we get sine x times 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0 and so one of two things is true either the sine x equals zero or two cosine x minus one equals zero. In the case that sine x equals zero, we are trying to find, that, that would mean that x is equal to sine inverse of zero. And on the interval zero to two pi, sine is zero when x equals zero degrees, um, pi radians and two pi. The reason we do not include 2 pi is that the, the parenthesis says don't include 2 pi. And then the other possibility is that 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, which is going to mean that cosine x equals a half, which means that x equals cosine inverse of one half and so on the unit circle cosine is a half when x equals uh 60 degrees cosine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant four so 60 degrees and 300 degrees your answer needs to be in radians so that's going to be pi over three and five pi over three so your four answers should be zero pi pi over three and five pi over three if you enter them from least to greatest, that would be from zero, then pi over three, pi, and five pi divided by three. And again, do not include two pi because the interval does not allow for it. Uh, the next problem that we have is, which of the following is a equivalent to cosine theta plus pi plus sine theta plus pi. So we're just using the two coat the sum and uh, the sum formulas for cosine and sine. The formula for cosine of a plus b, for instance, is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And then for the sine of a sum, so the sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. And so then for this formula, uh, all we have to do is simplify this. So we're going to use the cosine of a sum formula here. We'll do them in different colors. We'll do this one in blue. Uh, I think we chose that orange. Cool. So the cosine of theta plus pi is going to be the cosine of theta times the cosine of pi minus the sine of theta times the sine of pi. Uh, let's get some more room here. So we'll write this here. So we got cosine theta cosine pi minus sine theta 
sine pi. And now we want to do the same thing for the sine of a sum. So then we're going to have plus sine theta cosine pi plus cosine theta and the sine of pi. Pi is one of those special angles. It's one of the angles that's on the unit circle. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The sine of pi is 0. So just in these places, we're going to just put a negative 1 and put a 0. So negative 1 times cosine theta is going to give us negative cosine theta. And since the sine of pi is 0, this entire term cancels. So we get negative cosine theta plus then the sine of theta is, I mean, we have cosine theta, is, cosine pi is negative one, so negative one times sine theta, we have plus negative sine theta, I suppose, and zero times cosine theta is zero. So we're just left with negative cosine theta plus negative sine theta, we can factor a negative out, and it gives us negative one times cosine theta minus sine theta plus sine theta. So negative cosine theta plus sine theta is what we're looking for. So that would be that option, negative cosine theta plus sine theta as our answer. For uh, problem number three, we have to find the exact value of cosine to theta and so all we need to do for this is know the formulas for each of those each one of those formulas uh each one of the double angle formulas require that you know the cosine of an angle so first we need to calculate cosine and we can do that because we have the tangent value of that angle so First, if tangent theta is 3 halves, and you know that theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, that means theta is in quadrant 3. It's a quadrant 3 angle. So just up here, we can uh, draw our angle theta. So say the right triangle that we get is this. If, if, so if this is theta, then the opposite side is 3, the adjacent side is 2 then the tangent is going to be is going to be positive both of our values are really like negative two and negative three because it's in quadrant three if we did the pythagorean theorem we would have three squared plus two squared equals the hypotenuse squared and we would get the square root of 13 as the hypotenuse so we need that so we can do cosine so the formula for cosine two theta is you can pick one if you're given only the cosine value you should just use the formula cosine 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 and so in this case the cosine of 2 theta is going to be well we need to calculate cosine theta based on our triangle cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side, which is negative 2, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 13. So negative 2 divided by the square root of 13. So if we substitute this into our formula, we get 2 times negative 2 divided by the square root of 13 squared minus 1. And from here, this is just algebra. Uh, in the parentheses, you're going to just square the numerator and denominator. So you get 4 divided by 13 minus 1 and that is going to be 8 over 13 minus 1 so that's negative 5 over 13 so negative 5 divided by 13 for number 2 the sine of 2 theta is we we, we just went over this it's um the sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Cool? So now we already know cosine 
we knew cosine was negative two divided by the square root of 13. If we go back to our uh, picture for a moment, then sine is negative three divided by the square root of 13, if we look at that diagram. So negative three divided by the square root of 13. So all we have to do is uh, simplify that product. So we have two times negative three divided by the square root of 13 times negative two divided by the square root of 13. And in the numerator, two times negative three times negative two is gonna be 12. And then in the denominator, square root 13 times square root 13 is just 13. So our answer is 12 divided by 13. So, so far, cosine is negative, sine is positive. So then the last one is find the exact value of tangent to theta. So the formula for tangent to theta is 2 tangent theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta. Now, we already know that the tangent of theta was 3 over 2. We started out the problem with that information. Tangent is 3 over 2. So all we have to do is substitute that in in each spot in this formula, and we're done. So 2 times 3 halves divided by 1 minus 3 halves squared, that's going to be 6 over 2 divided by... In the denominator, we get 1 minus 9 over 4, which is negative 5 over 4. So divided by negative 5 fourths. However you want to do this from here, you can put it in a calculator. Uh, it's a simple fraction. So you get basically 3 times 4 divided by negative 5, which is going to be negative 12 divided by 5. So that's the tangent value. So tangent is negative, cosine is negative, and sine is positive. So based on the information, what we know is the sine of 2 theta was greater than 0. The cosine for 2 theta was negative, And the tangent for 2 theta was also negative. Where sine is positive and cosine and tangent are negative, that means that angle should be in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2. Uh, number seven is tangent of x is five six. The tangent of y is three sevenths. What's the exact value of tangent x plus y? Then again, we're just using the tangent of a sum formula. And that formula is, if you're adding, it's going to be tangent x plus tangent y divided by, oh, my hand, divided by one minus the tangent of x times the tangent of y. So again, we're just substituting numbers into a formula. So in this case, we're going to get 5 sixth plus 3 sevenths divided by 1 minus 5 sixth times 3 sevenths. And you can just put this in a calculator from here and it'll give you whatever number. So for my people who struggle with fractions, you get a common denominator of, uh, what, 42. So that means you need to multiply the 5, 6 by 7. So you get 35 over 42. Plus, you need to multiply the 3 sevenths by 6. So you're going to have 18 over 42. And then in the denominator, you're going to have 1 minus 15 over 42. So 1 minus 15 divided by 42 that's basically 42 over 42 minus 15 over 42, which is 27 divided by 42, which in the numerator, we get 53 over 42 divided by 27 over 42. We can basically drop the 42s and we get 53 divided by 27. Now, the reason we can just drop the 42s is that it's the same denominator. So when we multiply by the reciprocal, of 27 divided by 42, show the work. So 53 over 42 times 42 over 27, the 42s divide to equal one. So we get 53 divided by 27. So anyway, for each of these sum and difference formulas, you just need to know the appropriate trig value and you substitute that value in. 
And the last uh, question is, to the nearest degree, what is the value of X plus Y from question seven? Well, all you got to do is tangent inverse of 53 divided by 27. So tangent inverse of 53 divided by 27. And whatever you get in degree mode, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So I get tangent inverse of 53 divided by 27. Oh, almost put in five divided by 27. 53 divided by 27 is 63 degrees. So 63 degrees. That's what I get. All right. So that is that the last one here? Yep. So uh, that concludes this uh, somewhat brief quiz over some and differences. Uh, see you all in class.